Ah, we got uh, Tony Gertman on the line talking to Ohio State football. You can join uh, Tony and the rest of the staff at the Ozone.net. Tony out of practice today, taking in day three in pads. Uh, we'll continue. Ten, uh, yeah, we will continue on the track of, of the NFL draft. And uh, we talked to Paris Campbell. Uh, you know, what are you hearing in regards to obviously Nick Bosa, extremely high. Dwayne Haskins uh, is very much targeted to New York and the Giants. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just across the board, any rumblings that you're hearing where guys stock is uh, increasing or dropping? I think P Paris Campbell and, like I said, Terry McLaurin, their, their stock is up. I was talking to a scout oh, uh, after the combine, a couple days after the combine, asking him if uh, if Paris Campbell had played his way into the first round. And he told me no and that, you know, stop being a homer, basically. But um, I, I have the same questions that a lot of people do. Like I, can he play outside? Um, do people want him playing outside? You saw how effective he is as an inside receiver. Um, he, he played outside his first few years with, you know, not much success. And then they moved him to the slot to the H back his last two years. And, and he took off. I, I can understand teams having some concern about that and you didn't get to see him go deep much and when he did it was you know even when the ball was right to him it was a 50 50 thing um so maybe he's a guy that you take early in the second or you know somewhere in there but he's got the speed that everybody loves he's got good size he's 6'1 205 210 pounds um, is comfortable with the ball wherever in, in terms of carrying it and is not a guy who is afraid of contact uh, comes from a disciplined program. Like, now he's he's a dynamic kick returner, but Ohio State stopped having him kick re return kicks because uh, he, you know, gotten concussed a couple of times. So I don't know that that's something that he would look they would look at in the NFL. And you know, kickoffs are pretty much becoming obsolete in in the league anyway. Um, defensively, I think Draymond Jones probably didn't have as good of a day, um, or you know, at the combine, he didn't do much. He did the defensive line drills at the pro day. Um, you know, he's talking to some teams. He was a guy that I think a lot of people assume was going to be a first rounder to start the season. And there was even talk after his red shirt sophomore season, you know, the year before last, if, if he came out, he might be at the, uh, the end of the first round, but the defensive line class is so deep that, you know, he might be the eight or ninth defensive tackle. Just because there's so many, uh, so but he's also a guy that you know is maybe a defensive end who could be a three-four defensive end or even a four-three defensive end if he slimmed down a little bit because that's he was a def he came into Ohio State as a defensive end, but Larry Johnson likes to take the bigger defensive ends and throw them into at the three technique because he likes having pass rushers there. So um, I he might you know he might drop down into the third round or so you know just because there's so many defensive linemen defensive tackles. And then, you know, we were talking earlier about Kendall Sheffield before the show who was might be the fastest guy in the draft. You know, he holds the Ohio State 60 meter record in the indoor track, but he tore a peck or hurt his peck at the combine doing the bench press and didn't get to run, didn't get to do any drills, didn't do any work at Ohio State on pro at the pro day. He still wasn't recovered, you know, talking to some teams. Uh, he needed this. This was bad for him in, in terms of missing both of these. Um, av availabilities, I guess you would call them. And he's a guy that needs to show ball skills because we saw so many times this over his two years at Ohio State, he could be right in position, but would still give up the catch. And the ball would come, you know, just <laughs> right over his ear a lot of times. And I think that's one of his big cr the critiques that he, that the scouts have for him is he doesn't locate the ball, doesn't have the natural, um, awareness of of maybe the ball or his surroundings and uh, but yeah that's you know no linebackers for the buckeyes this year nick bosa obviously i think anybody who doesn't take him will regret it <laughs> you know even if you need a quarterback i just he's a guy who is just relentless and he went through a lot of the stuff that his brother went through as juniors being just you know, throwing so many blockers at him and it didn't matter. I mean, he was going to put up monster numbers last year until he got hurt. He still finished 
He, I think he had six tackles for loss in three games, and Ohio State's other starting defensive end finished with six and a half over you know fourteen games. Uh, he's just you know he's he's a monster. Yeah, and I recently saw the numbers in in regards to all the measurements versus his brother in both size, but also a measurement in terms of activity that uh, they were measured on, and uh, pretty much outdid his brother Joey uh, just uh, right down the line. Yeah, and you know, Joey's a little bit bigger, but Nick Bosa has what Joey would tell you is he's oh, Nick has always been ahead of him at each stage. And Nick Bosa played as a fr true freshman on defensive line in high school when Joey was a senior. You know, Nick Bosa was probably like a 240 pound nose tackle at that time, playing on a defensive line in in big Florida, you know, schools, and was was holding his own and uh, got to learn from his brother, got to learn from his father, and it was just you know everything that Joey would learn, Nick would pick up. And Nick also had more time with Larry Johnson because you know, Joey didn't have Larry Johnson his freshman year. And I think Nick would tell you that that's also helped him. Uh, but yeah, I really, I don't think there's, we talk about guys who are can't miss. And I think, you know, I thought Joey was one. I think Nick Bosa is one for sure. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Buckeyes with Tony Gerdeman from the ozone.net. Of course, if you enjoy the content here, please share the video, subscribe to the channel, like, and comment as well. Uh, one last thing, Tony, of course, uh, we talk about the guys moving on to the next level. Let's talk about the guys coming into a next level uh, in regards to uh, who showed up on this particular weekend uh, while the current Buckeyes were practicing these guys getting a look at campus. Yeah, today was a very big recruiting day. Uh, there, there's so many names. Um, the the top guy I would say was probably uh, 2020 receiver, five star receiver Julian Fleming out of Pennsylvania, number one receiver in the nation. He has been to Ohio State now, I think, four times in maybe the last nine months. What he's been to Penn State probably two or three times that that many times, and I think most people would say Penn State or Clemson. Are the uh, it's Penn State, Clemson, and Ohio State who are like the three in that. Um, but you know, he keeps keeps showing up to Ohio State. There were some, you know, this is the 2020 recruiting class that's being, you know, the, the signing the first signing day is in December. But there's 2021 quarterbacks, 2022 players, uh, just the uh, Urban Meyer hated how fast the recruiting calendar was moving, and. It, you know, when they've already got 2022 20, guys in, you know, visiting and they've got guys coming from all over the country. And you know, I think, um, you know, five star Texas or California receiver Bo Collins was in uh 2021 20, guy. He was in as well. It's interesting to see the reaction from receivers and quarterbacks to last year's performance, which you would expect. Uh, sometimes the uh, like a, like a national championship, they say. Um, it takes a year before it really you really get that recruiting boost. It, it takes uh, it doesn't take that long for a five thousand yard passing quarterback when your receivers in, the, in high school see that and would like to be a part of that. Where if if you're the number three guy, you're still going to catch fifty passes, eight hundred yards, and um, you're going to do it at a place like Ohio State that does contend for a national championship. This isn't going to be Texas Tech, where seven and six, and you, you know, you're stuck in, you know, Texas Tech. So it's it's a different it's a different world. Uh, you've got Ryan Day, and as I think I've talked to you before about this, where they're going to send Dwayne Haskins into the top ten, we assume, of the NFL draft. If they do that with Justin Fields as well. Uh, then does do we start to see Ohio State sort of, and I've written about this before, could this, this be the start of Ohio State becoming a quarterback U, which would be outlandish when you consider Ohio State's history in the NFL with quarterbacks where the best ones would be Mike Tomzak, Tom Tupa, Kent Graham, you know, the most prolific. You know, and it's it's not a great list. And the first uh, Art Schleister was the uh, maybe the only first round quarterback that Ohio State has sent to the you know drafted in the first round and 
we all know he was a spectacular bust. Uh, so Dwayne Haskins might be starting something here, and if 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 Justin Fields can continue that, then you might be able to start lining them up. And they've already got their 2020 quarterback committed in Jack Miller. He's a top five pocket passer out of Arizona. And that's another thing. They're recruiting. They've got Arizona is big this year. Washington, they're out there in Washington. All kinds of talent out there as well. Uh, it's it's an interesting time to be following Ohio State recruiting. And, and Ryan Day is going after Ohio kids more than Urban Meyer did, but he's also looking west, looking south. You know, Florida is always going to be there, Georgia. Um, yeah, it's – it's it's an interesting time at Ohio State for sure. Yeah, nobody really threw the ball at Ohio State uh, until Arch Schleitzer, and uh, he was the first guy to put up some numbers. Uh, my son, I'll reference him again, loves the stat that I throw at him because I'm a huge Arch Schleitzer guy, regardless of what happened to him right. uh, later in going to the Colts. But when he was on the field at Ohio State, he was my guy. And uh, four touchdowns, 21 interceptions his freshman year at Ohio State. It's just unthinkable uh, that somebody would do that. But it was just a different time. He wasn't that deplorable. But it, it, he had a rough time, uh, five out of the gate against Penn State in week one. But, uh, yeah, after that, you would have to say Mike Tomczak was the most uh, successful quarterback uh, in the pros at Ohio State, you mentioned a few guys that uh, would get like half season starts, like yeah, Ken yeah. Graham with the Giants, Craig Krenzel did with the the Bears, uh, Troy Smith. I remember one of Troy Smith's last starts. It might have been his last start. He had like a spectacular game uh, for the 49ers against the Rams in a meaningless game between two bad teams, but threw for like 340. And then he had the offseason issues and never. Uh, got back on the field. But uh, yeah, the quarterback position, it's not even close, has been the weakest, not even close the weakest if you line up all the positions historically for Ohio State in the NFL. Yeah, and we could go on and on. You know, Bobby Hoying was mm -hmm. the Eagle starter for, you know, five or six, you know, started the season for them and, and made it, you know, five or six games or so. And like you said, Craig Krenzel, Tom Zach would be the guy where, um, the starter would get hurt early in the season and he would start the rest of the season, <laughs> those types of things. And, um, it was, it's not, it's not been great. Um, but maybe things will start to turn. And, and that was one of the things, you know, Ur urban Meyer came to Ohio state had never had a thousand yard rusher. And, you know, he got that Ohio state and it, it always felt to me like the one thing that he did not get for Ohio state or did not produce at Ohio state was that first round quarterback. And that's, I, I think he did. You know, at the end with, with Dwayne Haskins, I, I, you know, we can credit him for that. You know, he brought Dwayne Haskins in, although Haskins was their second choice at quarterback to a guy who um, quit the position and wanted to play re receiver instead. So, uh, <laughs> and, and Maryland fired Randy Edsel, which also helped Ohio State land Dwayne Haskins. So there's a lot of things that had to happen to get him here, uh, but it, it turned out well for everybody. And, and, I think this is the start, and, and as long as Ryan Day is around, he's going to put some big numbers, big numbered quarterbacks on the field. All right, talking Buckeyes with Tony Gerdeman from the Ozone. Uh, please join him uh, for some smart analysis on Ohio State football again at theozone.net. Uh, Tony, appreciate you stopping by. No, no problem. Thanks for having me.